Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use Mars MOLA 3D altitude data and turn it into a 3D model in your favorite 3D modeling software. My name is David Black and I teach uh, 3D modeling and animation and astronomy and science classes at American Academy of Innovation in Daybreak, Utah. So let's begin. The first step is you need to find the data. The 3D altitude data of Mars was acquired by the MOLA instrument on the Mars Global Surveyor spacecraft. Now, MOLA stands for Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter. It was a device on the Mars Global Surveyor spacecraft that sent a laser beam down to the surface and then timed how long it took for that beam to come back to the space probe. From that, it could tell what the 3D altitude was. So to find this, we type in Mars MOLA data in a Google search and the very first choice is the one that you want to go to. So let's click on that and it takes us to the main website. This is the Planetary Data System or PDS Geosciences Node at the Washington University in St. Louis or Wustel. And what we're after here is the MOLA MEGDRs. That's the Mars Experimental Gridded Data Record. We scroll to the bottom of the page and that's where the most detailed information is. This is where um, the most detailed models are found. And then, of course, the next part is you have to decide what data you actually want to download. Now, Mars has been divided up into 16 quadrangles. If you look at this map of Mars, you have the prime meridian, which goes down through what's called Terra Meridiani, and then, of course, the equator of Mars. That forms the 0, zero position. Longitude is divided up into four sections, each 90 degrees. Now, on Mars, it doesn't have east and west longitude. It's all just east. So it's divided up from 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, and 270 to 360 again. The latitude is divided up into four sections, each 44 degrees. The top two degrees and the bottom two degrees are not included in this data. So it goes from 88 degrees north to 44 degrees north, from 44 north to 0, from 0 to 44 south, and from 44 south to 88 degrees south. Now that divides you up with a 4 by 4 grid, or 16 pieces. And then there's three different types of data, counts, radius, and topography. What we want is to download the topography data. And it's listed as MEGT, Mars Experimental Gridded Topography, and then the, the final name is according to the upper left-hand corner of the grid. Now you have to decide which one of these areas you want to look at. That requires knowing a little bit about the geography of Mars, or I suppose aerography is the correct term. So let's say that I want to download the area of uh, Casse Vallis and Chrysi Planitia. So that is at 270 degrees east longitude, and it's, it's between zero and 44 degrees north. So the name of this would be 44 north 270. And I'm going to look at the topography data. Now inside that square there are two files. One is a .img file, which is your raw image. And then the other is a label file, LBL, which has metadata information on this file. You'll want to look at that for just a moment. So scrolling down on the file, what we're after, we're trying to look to see how big this file is. And it's listed here as being lines and line samples. It has 5,632 lines or rows, and then 11,520 samples per line or columns, in other words. So what we're looking at is basically an image that's 5,632 by 11,520 pixels. That's a lot of data. Another important thing to know is what kind of bit depth does each data point have? Well, it's 16 bits grayscale, which gives you a whole lot of shades of gray. If it was only 8 bit, then you'd wind up with little terraces in the data that wouldn't look very good. So it's important that you write these numbers down because we will need them later on. Now let's go back and actually download the data itself. So again, I'm looking at the section of, say, Chrysi Planitia, and that's 44 north to 0 north latitude, 270 east to 360 degrees. And I will click on the IMG file and it will automatically start to download. Okay, my data download has been completed, so now I need to move on to the next step. 
Unfortunately, for most 3D modeling software, the .img format, the raw image format that NASA uses, uh, can't be turned directly into a 3D model. It would be nice if you could. But what we have to do first is find a program that can read this data and then translate it into a format that our 3D software can load in. And that program actually winds up being something that's really simple and free. It's called ImageJ. It's a program developed by the National Institutes of Health. It's also very good at taking numbers and turning them into grayscale images and then reading a lot of different image formats and turning them into data, which is what we're going to use it for. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up image J. This is image J. So what we're going to do is take the Mars data and load it in here and then save it in a format that we can use. So to do that, we'll go ahead and say File and Import Raw. File Import Raw. The IMG format that NASA uses for its altitude data is really a grayscale image with white representing high areas and dark representing low. So I'm going to open it up directly. And then this little window pops up here. Here's where you need the information that you wrote down from the LBL file. So what we have to type in here is first choose under image type. We want to have 16-bit signed. That's very important. That's what makes this program useful. I've tried this before with Photoshop and you have a problem because the data is actually positive and negative. So on Mars they used an aeroid or sea level measurement and then the data is how many meters up and down from that sea level position. And unfortunately since you have negative numbers Photoshop can't read negative image data. Image J can. But you have to choose 16-bit signed meaning it's both positive and negative and it's 16-bit data. You also need to put in the width, that's the bigger number that we looked up in the label file, 11,520 pixels by 5,632 pixels high. Everything else is alright, so click OK, and voila, there you have it. The final file is about 124 megabytes, which that's pretty big for an image. The 3D modeling software I'm going to be using can read that and turn it automatically from a grayscale image into a 3D terrain, a height map. However, this has got so much data in it that my 3D modeling software can't handle it all. So I'm going to have to translate this through another program, I'll use Photoshop, and then cut out just the part I want to keep. So I'm going to basically download this or save it in a format that Photoshop can understand because Photoshop cannot read the IMG file. So we're going to say File, Save As. There's a couple of choices. PNG often works pretty well, but for our purposes on my Mac, I'm going to use PGM. I've been having some trouble with the PNGs lately, but PGM, and I'm not going to keep it as MEGT44N270. That's not a name that really rolls off the tongue. So I'm going to call this Crisy. I can spell it right, Crisy Planitia. That's the main area here. And I have to decide where to put it. I'll put it out on the desktop and say save. And this will be a PGM file. Let's get into Photoshop so we can crop this data. So here's the entire image. I want to just be able to crop out part of it. All you need to do is just take the crop tool here in Photoshop or whatever program you're using and drag out a square. Hold down shift while you drag this out make the data square because our 3D modeling software likes to make square terrains and then make this a little bit bigger. So this includes the area of Shalbatana Vallis, Aris, Aram Chaos here, even Marth Vallis here which is one of the places they're looking to land space probes. So um, I hit enter and then let's save this out under a new name. So file save as and I'm going to call this instead of a uh, PGM. Let's make this a PNG. That will work better for our 3D software. And I'm just going to call this Aram Chaos Section. Okay? And there we go. Well, choose none for interlacing. Keep in mind this is a pretty big image. Even this small cropped out area is about 60 inches wide. Now comes the final phase, which is turning it into a 3D model. The software that I'm going to use is called Bryce, Bryce 7.1, and 
It's by a company called Daz 3D that's actually located here in Salt Lake City. And uh, it's a program that's been around for a long time, and the, and the company that owns it, Daz 3D, is not developing it anymore. But it's still available. You can download it from their website for $20. And you'll get the installer, and you can put it on your machine. It works well on Mac computers, all the My System software is kind of old. Uh, but it also works well on Windows 10, and it's a really easy program to learn. So let's go ahead and get into Bryce. So I've got the PLE version, but uh, you'll have the Pro version, a lot more available for you. The first thing that we need to do is to create a mountain. Then what we're going to do is change that mountain into the image that we just cropped. So this interface was designed by legendary Photoshop guru Kai Kraus. And he made this very simple to get into and use so that you can be doing great things and rendering out great images within about 10 minutes. Compared to other programs where you've got menus and, and windows all over the place. So the first thing we want to do is, here's our scene. Let me explain what you're seeing for just a moment. We are in the Create menu, if you look at the top here. On the left-hand side are a series of tools for navigating around in your scene and for rendering out the scene. On the upper left-hand corner, you have basically a mini preview or nano preview window, window that shows you what the scene looks like without having to render it out. Then across the top in the Create menu are a series of objects that you can make. We're trying to make a mountain, so that's what we're going to do. We'll click on the Mountain button and it automatically makes a red wireframe down here of a random fractal-based mountain. To be able to bring in the, the terrain that we have created from Mars, we'll have to click on this little E button over here, choose it, and uh, this is now the terrain editor that we're in here. E stands for edit. Our first step is we have to turn up the resolution of this terrain. And that's done by coming to the little toolbar over here on the left, choosing the grid at the bottom, and then turning this up. Now, you might be tempted to choose planetary resolution because, after all, we are bringing in a chunk of a planet, but Actually, gigantic resolution is better unless you have four or five gigabytes of RAM on your machine. I don't, so we're going to choose gigantic. Another thing is you want to make this model solid. Won't make too much of a difference, just in case you want to cut holes in it, it will look better. So I'm going to choose this little arrow and choose solid. Nothing much happens. Now we need to, to load in that graphic. You have Choices down here under Editing Tools, Elevation, Filtering, and Pictures. Let's go get the pictures. If you notice right here, there's a little word that says Load. So click on that, and we'll go find it. So the one that I saved is called Aram Chaos Section. I'll open that up. It brings it in. If I had tried to bring in the entire quadrangle, I would have been waiting forever. But this allows you to bring in two different images and blend them if you want to, but we're not, so I'm just going to bring in the same image here as well. So I'll load Aram Chaos in twice, in both the left and the center one. So together they make one. Now to actually turn this into the model or into this image, I'll click on Apply. There it is. As you can see, here's the image that we just cropped out in Photoshop. Here's Aram Chaos. Here's the river running next to it. Here's Eris Vallis coming up, Shalbatana Vallis, and so on. This is Chrysi Planitia up here. Here's Marth Vallis, which is one of the sites we're looking at landing at. And as you can see in our model, the, high, the lighter areas in the image become mountains, and the darker areas become valleys. But it is highly exaggerated, because the grayscale image, the range has been stretched. So we're going to have to flatten this down quite a bit. But for now, at least we have the image in here. So click on OK. That's the check mark down in the bottom right. And here is our model. We're looking at it kind of over the top of Aram Chaos, looking from the south going north. I use my trackball here to kind of spin my camera angle around. And then I use these two-dimensional moving tools to move it up and down and left and right. So you can work two different directions at the same time. In Bryce, the x-axis goes from upper left to lower right, the y-axis is up and down, and the z-axis goes, goes in and out from lower left to upper right. 
So the grid here is on the x and z axis, and then y is up and down. So first thing I want to do is let's put a better texture on this. To, to put preset textures onto an object in Bryce is one of the little arrows that are all over the place. You go next to Edit, and there's a small arrow right here. Click on that, and that's the Materials Presets. If you choose that, this window opens up, and you can go in and choose from different categories down here in the bottom left. So I'm going to choose Terrains. That's what we're after. And then there's subcategories that come up. You can do Height Maps, which are altitude sensitive. You can do Planes, which are, you know, well, planes, rocky textures, snowy textures, textures with vegetation, which of course would not be appropriate for Mars, um, unless of course you terraform it. And we're just going to go in and choose height maps for now. Um, some of the height maps that are available in here automatically are these you see. I've created some others, basically just some colored textures. Then I've imported some gradients I made in Photoshop and created my own altitude sensitive images. So let's choose this one here. It goes from white and yellow through red and orange to purple and blue. I'll say OK. Now if you want to see what the image actually looks at, like you can see the nano preview up here, but if you click the green ball over here on the left hand side, that will render out your image. And you can see it's still highly exaggerated, but my river valleys and the you know, ocean bottom up here, Chrysi Planitia, they're purple. Higher elevations are orange to yellow to white. Now, after you've rendered it, if you hit Escape, it stops the render. Hit Escape again, and it gets back to your wireframe. So let's squish this down. To do that, I have to click on the Edit button up here. Not the one at the top menu, but the gray one underneath it. Choose that. This brings up our editing tools for changing the texture, for changing the size for changing the rotation, changing the position, and so on. I'm going to squish this down on the y-axis. So I point my mouse at this little green square at the very top. You see y comes up. Hold down my mouse and I'm going to drag it to the left. I'm squishing this down quite a bit. Let's render it again and take a look. That's better. All right, now that's essentially what we want. Now when this is all finished rendering, I can save this image out. I can also go in and increase the resolution of the image so it can, it can get a better picture. So this is a good section of Mars, and we have successfully done this. Of course, now we can render out some pictures of it, put different textures on it, uh, maybe make a better texture on the, on the background, on the ground plane here. We can even uh, render it as an animation, zooming our camera in on it. So that's basically how you get uh, 3D altitude data from NASA into your computer. Have fun with it. Let me know how it goes.